Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in now. Y'all been asking, and I say, okay, y'all keep asking about talks with Tony, so let me bring it back. So I'm going to go through some emails on the videos, and sometimes you get one long letter, and they take a whole video, and sometimes they're shorter, so it's kind of a mashup. And so if you see me put, you know, one title for a video, it could be others. To send in your letter, you can send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Now, the scammers have been watching the videos and they're picking up or they got some kind of system now, I guess, where they can scan any email addresses across YouTube that's posted. So my inbox has been flooded with like promo offers like, hey, we want to collaborate with your channel and all of this. And I don't think it's real. Cause the stuff really don't have nothing to do with the channel with my channel so so y'all got to forgive me i'm trying to get through them so if your letter came in a long time ago you know send it again if it's something new i have 1928 unread emails in here so these go way back so really this isn't advice this isn't me giving advice to a particular person this is me using a situation to teach a lesson from the situation. So this do not use this for crisis coaching. Do not use this for free coaching. This is your situation that's not time sensitive. So don't send in time sensitive questions because everybody has that email address that I just gave you. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. So I got this here letter and these are anonymous. So we don't know these people from a can of paint. Is it possible to marry someone you love and still grow individually? My husband and I have been childhood sweethearts who moved apartment from each other and found each other again while we were 20 years old. We got married at 25. We have two children. My first child is not his biological child, but has been in his life since was one years old. He is 11 now and our daughter is seven. We have been married for five years and I now see I ignored some red flags. I have always been the driven one, it seems. I am always pulling him to get things done. He doesn't have a car and every time I ask about it, he gets defensive or says he doesn't have one because he is paying all the bills and says I question him too much. I communicate too much and he almost makes it like pulling teeth. Since before marriage, I was carrying the load and up until two years ago, he started pulling his weight and paying all the bills. Our marriage feels like we are roommates. I'm very distant and protective of my space and emotions. I'm at a place where I often want to be on my own and I just started my own home care business. I love it, but it takes me away from my kids. So I'm learning to balance and get a few employees. It seems like he won't leave the marriage, but often says, if I want to leave the marriage, then do it. There is trust issues and disrespect verbally in our marriage. He is also an introvert and I'm opposite and he doesn't like going to family functions. So oftentimes it's just me and the kids. I'm one foot out the door, but my children need two parents and a man that wants to be socially involved and teach them morals and values and go on trips and do things as a family. Yes, his grandma raised him. His mom is distant in his life and dad died when he was nine years old. I only grew up with my mom and the stepdad, but we did more things as a family and I'm very close to my mom, feeling hopeless and ready to start living life, living the life I deserve. Well, that's a very tough question and i've spoke about that on the channel here and there because childhood sweethearts rarely work out and the reason being is because what you like as a child you're not really going to like as an adult we grow in so many different ways and things change now this is just your side of the story this is not his side of the story so now i'm starting to take that into consideration that is just one side because I've noticed from doing couples coaching, when I talk to the woman, I'm on her side. When I talk to the man, I'm on his side. So I realize there's three sides to the story, your side, his side, and the truth. Now, what I can pick up from this right here is if he's paying all the bills, then 
that's probably, like he said, why he can't have a car. Men don't like a lot of nagging. Men don't like a lot of, you know, over communication on average. Most men, I, I, I would want more communication from my wife, but she don't like to communicate. She like to talk about stuff and I like to communicate. So it come down to personalities and you got to understand that personality is going to get different. If you watching my videos and you don't know me, but you know, I'm a husband. And if you hear me talk about me giving my wife, you know, money every week and me buying her for nothing gifts, you will look at a man who's providing and paying bills and blessing his wife and you will start to look down on your husband. When if you got a hardworking man and he paying bills and he's in the home and he's an introvert. So that means being an introvert, he's less likely to be out cheating because he don't even like to really get out the house. You actually, to me, it sounds like you got a good man. It sounds like you got, got a good man and, you know, you want a fairy tale and nothing is going to be a fairy tale. Now, if you was catching him cheating, if you say, hey, I'm catching him cheating or things were getting physical, then that's different. Disrespect verbally in our marriage. You didn't say which way it go. You say there is trust issues and disrespect verbally in our marriage. But with you overly questioning him about a car that let me know that you know you don't mind speaking up so the disrespect could even be from you and then with you being a go-getter with you being an entrepreneur you know that's a different type of woman because a lot of women want to kind of live off of the man's earnings so that she could be full-time with the kids but you have kids one of which is not his child and you are going and starting a business that's taking a whole lot of time. So what you have to realize is you got a man that is with you and who married you at 25 years old. That is extremely, extremely, extremely mature for a man. He married you at 25 years old. Your first child is not his child. So he's taking care of another man's child and he's paying all your child's bills. He pays all the bills. You was carrying the load, but then he picked it up and understandably so because he married you at 25. Men don't really start to step into manhood until 25. So he married you at when he was an infant as a man. Women are more mature than men. And I think a lot of times, biologically, we don't understand that when a woman's eggs start, start to drop and a woman start to have her period, those things biologically will mature you because you have to, you become more emotionally intelligent just by having to bleed five days a, a month and not lose your mind. Like that makes you more emotionally intelligent. And we never even think about those things, what the body does. As a man, we have no body changes, like nothing changes in our body we don't go from having this regular body to you know having a, a a cycle we we don't have any changes like unless we get like you know acne or something like that but it's no like physical changes that can cause pain or discomfort or anything so women mature faster as their bodies are maturing and as the world is asking more of you, if your mom asking you to cook, asking you to clean and things like that. And men could do that, too, if that's required of them. But oftentimes it's not. And so at 25 years old, a man is 25. At 25, a woman is equivalent to like a 30 or 35 year old man in her maturity level. And so you have a guy who you was carrying, you was carrying the load financially. You a hustler, you a go-getter. I could tell that. That doesn't really sound like it's in him, but now he's man enough to go get a job. He also got a little kahunas about him because he said, listen, if you don't like the marriage, then go and leave. Get out the marriage then. It does not, from what you said, it does not sound horrible, especially the fact that his grandma raised him. His... His mom is distant and his daddy died when he was nine. 
he could have a whole lot more, a lot more going on. Like you got a very functional man to have gone through what he's gone through. And he's not only paying all the bills, but he's still carrying the, the bigger load because if he pay all the bills, then what you pay. And so if y'all are married, how does he not have a car if you got a whole job? So if he paying the bills, it's not your money, his money. It's like he should have a car because you should have the money out of your earnings to be able to pay for his car or pay his car note. Remember, this is your husband, not your boyfriend. So he shouldn't have to go and get everything all on his own if he making enough money to pay the bills. So if he paying all the bills and you got a whole job, then what are you paying? If he paying all the bills. So that could be paying for a car note for him. You see what I'm saying? And see, this is the thing with the new age relationships to where it's like, my, what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. You know, I work and I, I pay the bills. I earn money. But I got my wife two cars. I'm not going to say, oh, well, go get you a car. Or go get you a car because, you know, you know, I'm working. I got my car, so you need to get you a car. No, what's mine is hers. What's hers is mine. When we got together, she was going to be a doctor. I was a criminology major, so I was going to become a police officer. She was going to make more than me. So that means when we come together, if I'm at 40000 and she at 80000 we had 120000 but I can't afford to pay half of the bills. And if I pay all of the bills, then her 80000 would go to what my money can't cover. And that is marriage. And so you got to understand that. So from what I'm reading, it sounds like to me that, you know, you got a lot going on here. You got a lot go going on from your side. But it sounds like that. It sounds like to me that you're not operating with an attitude of gratitude. That you're looking out there and you're comparing a good man to what you see in the world that you don't know what's behind closed doors. You don't know what's going on behind them relationships that you watching my relationship online or you seeing these other relationships on Instagram. And I'm going to tell you, sister, it sounds like you got a good man. Because as you hear today, a lot of men are being told not to even deal with women like yourself. Meaning men today, by these men in the podcast, in the dark is telling men don't even pay no attention to a woman with a child your husband is taking care of your child and you say you are working so it's taking you away from your kids now you close with your mom so i would imagine she helping with the kids but when she's not helping it's your husband that's helping while you super busy hustling and grinding building your business so not only do you have a man that's willing to pay all of the bills, but he's also willing to be like soccer dad, you know, like daddy daycare, like be the one to where he is willing to do what a lot of men aren't willing to do. A lot of men will tell the woman, hey, I'm the hunter. I'm the go getter as the man. I'm not the one that's supposed to be chasing around kids. I'm supposed to be out here going to get it. And the kids come out of you this the mentality of men today they'll be telling you the kids come out of you you got breast to have to do for breast milk you're supposed to be chasing around with the kids he's supposed to be i'm supposed to be out here hustling and grinding your husband saying hey i'm working i'm paying all the bills but i'm also here for the kids while you out ripping and running hustling and grinding and one of the employees, you and him could start having an affair because you ain't happy with me at the house. That's what that's what your husband's saying. You see what I mean? So you got to realize and you got to appreciate and recognize a good man. This man ain't putting hands on you. This man not cheating on you. Because if he was doing that, you would have show sure said that. It just sounds like you don't think he hustled hard enough. And you don't think he communicate well enough. And that is not anything to be disgruntled about, unhappy about in a relationship. Trust me when I tell you. Trust me when I tell you. So, hey, thank you for that, Dale. That was that was a good little question. And um, I like that. Now, my dilemma is, do I do one video 
um, per lesson um, and, and have a million videos or do one long one. But, hmm. So y'all give me some feedback on that. Do y'all want little 15-minute videos or do y'all want one-hour videos? But I feel like that's a good little piece right there. So we'll call this one a, a wrap. Let me see here. We'll call that one a wrap for this here video and I post the other ones. Unless y'all want an hour, y'all let me know in the comments. You want one answer per video or multiple answers to get up to the hour. Whichever I see, whichever one I see the most, that's what I go with. God bless you. We'll talk soon.